Hello, my friends. Hello. I'm Black Dragon, and welcome to Black Dragon Biker News Network. And as always, we'd like to thank you for tuning in from wherever it is in the world that you happen to be. Wow. It's a great morning. Last night, like, it rained like crazily, man. It rained so crazy. It was just crazy. Then, like, I thought we were going to float away out there. Then all of a sudden, um, you know, it's beautiful out uh, today. Maybe it's going to be like a 70-degree day. It doesn't know what it wants to be out here. It's it's crazy. It doesn't know what it wants to be. Gee, Lord, have mercy on this. So anyway, um, it's good to have you guys all here today. Um, good morning, everybody. Good to see you all. Um, so... <sighs> They throw this term around, Outlaw Motorcycle Club, and Outlaw Motorcycle Gang. And, uh, yeah, it's a fair term. Uh, it's not a term that any of the motorcycle clubs have created. And I'm not one to sit up and act like motorcycle clubs ain't got some real winners in them. I mean, some real uh, buttholes. Uh, they've got motorcycle clubs have uh, have um, uh, real thugs in them, real criminals in them. Motorcycle clubs have real uh, gangsters in them, real gang members in them. Motorcycle clubs have all these things in them. They have real people that are running real drugs. Every real day. Um, absolutely. There's no doubt about it. But 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 then too, so does so does all of society. Uh, in 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 the local neighborhood, it could be multi million dollar homes. Uh, there's one home in the neighborhood throwing a party where people are doing lines of coke. Uh, off of strippers bare butts. There's um nightclubs. Uh everybody remembers Studio 54. There's nightclubs like that to in this very day out there doing the damn thing. And in a neighborhood with all nice houses and everybody's got a nice car. Uh there's a mom and dad that are selling dope out of their house with their children in the house. Society has good and bad in it. So do motorcycle clubs. And I am sure that there are motorcycle clubs out there that sell dope as a criminal enterprise. The, the motorcycle club itself. But for the most part, it's been my experience that there are individuals in motorcycle clubs that, that do um, stuff way more so than it is the motorcycle club itself generating state-sponsored wholesale outlaw motorcycle gangery. And um, so that's what gets on motorcycle clubs. That's why we're, we're always screaming, we are a club, not a gang. And this term gang that's been put on us it is more of a term that um, is um, uh, used to um, pad um, budgets, get high tech machinery. Um, it, it's it's used to um, support expenditures, keep people working. Uh, putting kids through college. Uh, and, um, oh, and, and Paul Boyle said, and there are also guys in the club that are tasked to bring revenue to support the function and find legal means to do so. Don't let me forget that, Paul. Uh, and so they use these, these, these things to, uh, this whole thing. Uh, they did it with terrorism. 
And they passed these laws against terrorism. We've only had like a couple major terrorism attacks in America. A couple times when they tried to uh, attack the World Trade Center. I guess the second or third time they actually knocked it down. Uh, but since then, I mean, it's been pretty much kaput. We haven't had anything else fall down or, or, or get knocked down. But all the laws that were passed against you and me as citizens, uh, NSA has come out and said, we record every text message and every phone call that's ever made in America. We record that. Oh, but what you know when do we ever get permission for that like when did we ever sign on for that like did that happen during 911 like um is that something that that we needed was that something that 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 we wanted to have happen um i didn't want that to to, to be a uh, a um A, a a result a consequence of of 911 we we are always you know we always get sucked into this where the only result that we can come up with is some kind of law that just destroys it for everybody uh now they can now because of the patriot act Blah 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 blah, and, and this is, let's go out the window. Like, well, we only had one attack, but hell, the the laws that have come down since then are draconian on the rest of on the rest of us. I think, uh, I think we got to think about that whenever we think about these labels they put on clubs and and various people when i was a kid it was drug dealer when i about 1987 they came out with this term this drug dealer term and the drug dealer dealer term was so it was so crazy because they could pull into a neighborhood in south central la of a family that had been there for 50 years and have the mom and dad out on the uh, out out on, against the cars in the in the sunlight with their naked asses in the air. Children at gunpoint, and people with black masks and hoods and tanks, uh, damn near virtual tanks, armored personnel carriers, kicking in their doors, and you come running out. That's the Joneses. What have they done wrong? And somebody in a black suit could look over and say, they're, they're drug dealers. And everybody would just turn around and go back in the house. It was like it was the magic word. It was like it was the elixir. It was like it was the judge, jury, and executioner word. Boom. You say that word, it's like a vampire seeing a cross. That's it. Throw some holy water on them and, and out. Um, and so this is, this is kind of how it, how it was. And that family could just disappear, never to be seen again. And no one would even ask a question. What happened to the Joneses? They were drug dealers. Then towards the nineties, uh, 2000s or so, uh, maybe a little bit later, certainly after 9-11, they became terrorist. The word terrorist was the word. You could do anything you wanted to anybody you wanted by just using the word terrorist. Then came the word, um, oh my goodness, what well, domestic terrorist. We got all these words, right-wing extremist. 
right wing extremists. That's a right wing extremist. Do whatever the hell we want to him. He's a right wing extremist. Then, oh my goodness, QAnon theorist, Black Lives Matterer. <laughs> Those are Antifists. And of course, outlaw motorcycle gangs. Outlaw motorcycle gangs. That's another term that they can use to pull you over in Texas when you have a legal permit to carry a weapon. Pull you over in Texas with a legal permit to carry a weapon and take your weapon because you are affiliated with a so-called gang. Not, not that you ever named yourself the such and such gang. You're not named the Banditos gang. <laughs> You're named the Banditos Motorcycle Club. The such and such motorcycle club. The, the, the person that named you a gang and designated you a gang also gets to be the person that arrests you and puts those charges on you. Named by the uh, named by the uh, uh, United States uh, oh my goodness <laughs> the name escapes me Bureau of Gang Namers named a gang and that's what they pass to the newspaper and that's what they pass to the uh, Congress and that's how they get more money and that's how you have police officers riding around in tanks with black masks on. They just kicked a guy's door open and killed him with a no-knock warrant. It was the wrong guy. Poor black kid. Uh, you know, once again, up there in Minnesota. And it's a justified killing. Because they saw a gun in his hand. But what does he wake up and see? Was it people in black masks? Why does a police officer need a black mask? SSW Custom Sewing said next it'll be subversive sewing folks or something. So they've got all kind of lists. They got the no fly list. You don't hear much about it anymore, but there are people on this list that had no way of knowing why they're on it and no way of really getting off of it. So we have this story um, out of Virginia uh, about the Wills of Soul Motorcycle Club. Ah, excuse me. <laughs> Will the Soul Motorcycle Gang, as they say. Once again, we got that, that term out. Um, and you're going to see the story, and I might even read this story over here that I have. And... They have gone into the Wheels of Soul Motorcycle Club. And I know I said I was going to do this yesterday, but I really got tired as heck. So that's why uh, I, I'm doing it this morning. Uh, but what I want you guys to listen for. Oh, Rob Benjamin said uh, the guy's head was still under the blanket. I, I didn't know, but geez he didn't even get a chance to see you you saw a gun he didn't even get a chance to see you and you just killed him wow um but uh i i want you guys to to listen to the story and they tossed a whole clubhouse 
um, of this so-called outlaw, outlaw motorcycle gang. And what I want you to hear in the story is how they tell you everything about how bad these guys are. And I'm, boy, by the time I get through hearing it, I'm like, yeah, lock them up. They're, they're involved in this and they're involved in that and they're, and, but nowhere, I, I just want to hear in the story where they have some evidence. When they kick your door, oh, no, excuse me. When they drive through your door with a effing neighborhood tank. That's not an M1 Abrams, but it's it's something that you ain't got. That you, none of you guys got one of these. It ain't nothing anybody in the neighborhood owns. Even if you have a Hummer, you ain't got one of these. Well, gas prices today, I don't know who has Hummers anymore. But even if you got a Hummer, you ain't got one of these. These these armored personnel carriers. So when they drive through your front door in one of these damn things. And they turn your clubhouse upside down. Based on a solid investigation. I don't want to read like that poor kid. Oops, we got the wrong house. Melissa Lay says evidence. Do we need that? Well, our society is supposed to be built on that as a back. Oh, Lee Leland said evidence. We don't need no stinking evidence. So let's uh, let's let's see if I can pull this up here. Is this? Oh, that's not it. Damn. I had it here. Where where is it? Yeah, this must be it. Where's the video? Okay, that I guess that is the video. Okay, that's the video. All right, sometimes you guys know that they'll try to run a commercial on me or something, but let's see if we can uh, pull this up. It looks kind of weird, but... Um, let's see if they'll just give it to me. Tonight, unsettling details following a police raid of a building in Portsmouth. Authorities searching for what they're calling the clubhouse of an outlaw motorcycle gang. News 3 reporter Antoinette Delville joining us now live in the studio. And Annie, this picture behind you shows weapons seized in a raid tied to this biker gang. Kurt, that's right. We have guns, weed, and other items all found inside Ronald Matthews' Isle of Wight County home in December. Okay. Let's just stop for a minute. We have weeds, weed, guns. I mean, they got a whole lot of guns there. Weed, all this stuff. Uh, tied to somebody else's, somebody's home. So I just love the way that they start this show out. And when you look at the, when you look at this thing right here, and it says, you know, outlaw motorcycle gang clubhouse raided and you see all this this looks like i would think that this came out of that motorcycle clubhouse it is the picture going forward it's the the picture that that is sold it this sells the story this is the effing clickbait And this is on the front page. This is this is the picture you get. And I'm here to tell you, 
Not one damn one of these things right here was taken out of the Wills of Soul Clubhouse. That, that that's that's unfair, man. That's that you know what? <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing to me. Um, because if all I saw was this uh, on that picture, on the front page, whatever the case may be, I would be like, man, we got to get those guys out of our neighborhood. This came from a guy's house. And I, I, I also want to say that here in Georgia, ain't none of this stuff illegal. Uh, in Georgia, you can have all these right here. And I know a lot of guys who have at least this much equipment at the crib. Uh, that's a legal gun. That's a legal gun. That's legal, legal, legal. Legal clips, legal. AR, uh, that's a AK-47. Uh, Semi-automatic, it's legal. That looks like an AR-15, legal. Shotgun, legal. Scopes, legal. Scopes, AR-15, legal, legal. Uh, it looks like a drum. Uh, one of those drum mags. Damn, I want one of those. Legal. Legal, 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 legal. Having a cut, legal. Helmet, legal. Stuff to work on your, your gun, legal. Ammunition, all in legal ammunition cases. And then some documents. Uh, who knows what's on those documents? Ammunition looks like legal ammunition. This is a whole table of legal stuff. Ah, uh, well, uh, you know, if you're uh, one of those left wing crybaby folks, you don't feel like it should be legal. But it was just a whole bunch of legal, 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 legal stuff looking like to me. Now, if they break in your house and you got weed in there, uh, they can take all your legal stuff. They can take all your legal stuff, tie it to the illegal stuff, and stick it on a table, <laughs> making it look like all that stuff on that table is illegal. And 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 we fall for that. You know, it just depends on who you like and who you don't like. Because if that's on the table of a Ku Klux Klan guy, I'm like, get him! That's right, it's, yeah! <laughs> uh, but if it's on the table of a, 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 of a Crip or a Blood, you're screaming. Uh... But um, if it's on the table of somebody you like, then maybe you're like, hmm. You know, we got I just think you got to think about this. But I just wanted to just point out that just in the beginning of the story, they come out and admit that we put this picture. The, so this, this, is, this is what ties us over to the clubhouse. My house was raided when I was 11. Gunpoint doors kicked in and house turned upside down only to find two joints in a plastic baggie. The weed was in now. You can buy weed next to schools and parks. Oh, yeah, they, they, they've had a war against weed for forever. Uh, somebody said this is a tactic the me media uses every day. And, you know, I don't want to be down. I just I just. I just want to say, like, I just want to point things out. Like, okay, so, dang, that's interesting. Okay, so this was not in the clubhouse. But I, I stopped the story. People get mad at me when I stopped the story. Why did you stop the story? Why didn't you just let it play all the way through? Okay, okay, okay. We'll let it continue playing. I can't promise I'm not going to stop it, but anyway, let's let it play. He's the man believed to be one of the ringleaders of the biker gang. Matthew's arrest led them to today's search at the clubhouse where investigators say they found evidence to help build their case against him and other illegal activity.
Local, state, and federal authorities raiding this clubhouse in Portsmouth Friday morning that police say is linked to an infamous group associated with organized crime. Witnesses saying they saw investigators in and out of the building. Yeah, the state police and some SUVs and stuff, man, it was, it was quite a bit of them. I really don't know what happened, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Is it concerning when you see that many police cars surrounding a business? Yes, yes, yes it was. The unassuming building sits behind a pizza shop on Elliott Avenue. The front of the clubhouse now boarded up after Chris Standard says he saw police bust through. A truck hit the door over here, ran through it. Isle of Wight County sheriffs carrying out two search warrants at the clubhouse where they say the Wheels of Soul outlaw motorcycle gang met at Weekly. And while it's unclear what went on inside, Captain Potter says evidence, including documents and ledgers, is tied to possible illegal activity throughout Hampton Roads and up and down the East Coast. They run these outlaw motorcycle gangs like a business. Most of the time, the businesses that they are involved in are criminal activity. The raid follows an arrest of Ronald Matthews of Isle of Wight County. During a search of his home in December, investigators found dozens of weapons, including high-powered rifles, drugs, and documents leading them to the clubhouse in Portsmouth. Potter calling Matthews one of the ringleaders of the local outlaw motorcycle gang. The FBI says these organized groups support themselves primarily through drug dealing, trafficking, stolen goods, and extortion. I think it's crazy because this area here is usually not too much crime, but yeah, it's kind of crazy. Because when they were here, they didn't seem like that type of gang. To a lot of people on the outside, they look like they're just a group of motorcycle enthusiasts to come together to ride. But in law enforcement circles and throughout investigations, we, we know that behind that veil, they are involved in criminal activity. Now, there were no arrests during today's raid, but police say the documents uncovered in the search will help them lead to other criminal activity in Hampton Roads. Antoinette Deldell, News 3. And so that's what we come to. It doesn't take much for you to start taking. I hate it when they do that. Um, so that's what we come to. We come to there were no arrests made. Because they didn't find none of that stuff at them folks' place over there. They didn't find none of that stuff at them folks' place over there. Um, and somebody said, well, yeah, all that stuff is legal unless you're a felon. And, you know, I didn't read that story. I don't know whether he's a felon or not. My, my main thing I pointed out was that none of this stuff came from the clubhouse. So... Uh, and my main my main point of that is the way they got that table loaded out with with the, all that stuff. I mean, it makes it look like that motorcycle club. You you guys know what the hell I'm talking about. We ain't we ain't even gotta go there. We ain't even gotta go there. You know what I'm you know exactly what I'm talking about. So uh, another thing, uh, they did this to my own clubhouse. There was a shooting outside a clubhouse we had in um, Phoenix, Arizona. A poor young man was killed. Didn't have nothing to do with us. We didn't kill him. He got into a fight in, in front of the clubhouse with, with somebody about something. And um, he... Uh, I don't even think he, he got shot in front of our clubhouse. He actually got shot uh, in the parking lot across the street or something like that in the parking lot or trying to get out of the parking lot or something. He wound up being shot and died a few doors down or whatever. Um, and one of the first things they did when they came to our motorcycle club, the news helicopters, it looks like, it looks like a you what you would think is a nondescript building happens to be a notorious motorcycle club. The Black Sabbath. Us. Notorious. I was like, wow. It looks like a nondescript building because it is nondescript. <laughs> Jeez. It's a it's a warehouse for Christ's sake in in a warehouse district. Uh, what do you want? Neon lights? Well, we can't afford those. 
you know, a lot of times motorcycle clubs don't have names on them because you cannot afford to put a damn name on the clubhouse. You know how much that cost? They got all these laws. You got to have a, you know, if you come there and there was a 30 foot sign up there in today's environment in, in cities, that sign was grandfathered for the last business. You come there, you may have to pay to take the damn thing down. But you ain't getting ready to put your name up there. Because it, it's against the law now. So you ain't fixing to put your name up there. If, just to even type, put your name in block letters on your building. Uh, in certain cities, it, it costs bank, bro. It's real live money. Anybody that's got a clubhouse can attest to that. If you think I'm lying, anybody that's got a clubhouse can attest to that. So a lot of times they're not in, in certain cities. Uh, we we in certain cities, certain cities have said no motorcycle club will put their name on a clubhouse. So of course the buildings are nondescript. Good morning, Dragon. I had ATF come to my house a couple years ago, take my guns. They said I had a warrant from 1996 in another state. They came a couple of years ago. So a 1996 warrant is almost 30 years old? <laughs> uh, yeah, because 96 to 2006 is 10 years. 2006 to 2016 is 20 years. 2016. Jeez, Lord have mercy. Huh. It cost me $3,000 and uh, eight months to clear my name and get my guns back. A warrant from 19... Like, is a warrant from 1996 even still valid? Because, like, there's a statute of limitations on most things. Uh, I think you're probably right, Brianna. Um, so it it uh, it's kind of interesting to me. They found papers. That's all they found. Shaking my head. None of the guns came out of there. They said it themselves. No, they found papers and that will lead them to other crimes. That's what they found. Papers that will lead them to other crimes. And, um, and, and, and so I, I think that's crazy. So when I come up back over here to the story itself, this is the actual written story. I want to see if we can glean any information, local, federal, and state agencies. Oh, and I, I want to, let me, let me add this. Let me add this. What, what hasn't been said, what the news didn't cover was the extensive damage done to the clubhouse. Or did they cover it? I think they did show the door. Did they say, maybe I'm mad. Did they say that uh, they drove one of them them things through the front door? One of those uh, bear cat things or whatever, thingy-majiggy things? You know, <laughs> the stuff that you see parked in the back of the police department and you, you shudder to think that they might loose that thing on a neighborhood. They, 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 you, you're like, and, and let me tell you something. If you've never seen that, if you've never seen tanks in your neighborhood, I was around for the, the, the riots, uh, in Los Angeles and, uh, what was it? Maybe 93. And, um, I was in the Navy then stationed in San Diego. So I, 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 I went to high school in Los Angeles, Chatsworth High School out in San Fernando Valley. And uh, and so I, I had some 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 ties to, to L.A. And I, I rolled up there. And one of the things that scared me um, was to see the National Guard running through the neighborhood. 
driving tanks and stuff. And those guys were not from there. They didn't know anybody there. They had rifles, not AR-15s. They had the real M-16 looking things, M-4s, whatever we called them back then. And they, they, they weren't playing. They weren't just a whistle and Dixie. You knew that um, if somebody turned them folks loose, um, it was going to be hell to pay. You you could see that. They weren't effing around. And, and so I've always been, like, terrified to see those things in the back of police stations because I've actually seen them deployed on highways and city streets. Uh, I've seen that. I've seen them deployed on city streets, and it's terrifying to just see the sheer power of those things. So just imagine one of those things, not 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 as big as a tank because they had tanks in L.A., but just imagine one of those things coming through your front door of your clubhouse, especially if you're you're in it. These people will kill you to take you into custody on a offense that doesn't have a death penalty as a result. They'll kill you just to get you in custody. It's terrifying. Uh, so local federal and state agencies raided what they believe is the clubhouse of an infamous biker gang associated with organized crime called the Will of Soul Outlaw Motorcycle Club. They're not called the Wheels of Soul Outlaw Motorcycle Club. That is not their name. They're not called that. That's not on their cut. Do you see anywhere on that cut where it says Wheels of Soul Outlaw Motorcycle Club? There's the cut right there. It does not say that. So I, I take issue. Forgive me. I just take issue. You know, uh, I'm not like a a supporter or cheerleader or anything. I'm just, I just take issue with, that's not their name. Their name is Wills of Soul Motorcycle Club. Called the Wills of Soul Outlaw Motorcycle. They may refer to themselves as outlaws. They may refer to themselves as one percenters, but the name of them is Wills of Soul Motorcycle Club. The Wills of Soul Motorcycle Club, and you might even be able to say nation. That's the name. Putting in tame, ask me again, and I'll tell you the same. The Isle of Wright County Sheriff's Office, Virginia State Police, and the Portsmouth Police Department, the U.S. Postal Inspector's Office, and the agents with Homeland Security Investigations executed two search warrants. They had a whole lot of folks. Isle of Wright County Sheriff's Office, Virginia State Police, the Portsmouth Police Department, the U.S. Postal Inspector's Office, and Homeland Security. Two search warrants at 2610 Elliott Avenue in Portsmouth Friday morning. Witnesses said they saw investigators in and out of the building. The state police, some SUVs. There was quite a bit of them, says Chris Stanford of Portsmouth. Um, and Portsmouth, Virginia is a tough place, bro. Tough place. I was stationed in Norfolk, Virginia. Very tough place over there. The state police... Some SUVs, a lot of them. Another man said it was concerning to see so many police out there. We, we saw that man on the video. They, like, found two guys. Like, neither one of them really wanted to talk. One guy had a mask on. Like, hell no. <laughs> uh, I really don't know what happened, he said. The unassuming building. I hate this unassuming building stuff. It was a building. It's a building. Sorry if I don't have... Pictures of wheels of soul plastered all over the thing and, and, and neon lights and everything. But unassuming building makes it sound so nefarious. It's an unassuming building. But what was going on on the inside? Anyway, the unassuming building sits behind a pizza shop on Nellie Avenue. The front of the clubhouse is now boarded up after Standard said he saw police bust through it. The truck hit the door and ran through it. Like, was that, I mean, I don't know. You could have knocked. Uh, and with all the problems going with these no-knock warrants, man, you would just think that 
most of these clubhouses, I promise you, most of these clubhouses, all you got to do is say, hey, man, we got a warrant. We need to come in. Oh, sh- sh- come right on in. Like, who's stupid enough to keep stuff in their clubhouse anymore if, if, if that's the case? The sheriff's office says investigators who followed up on leads developed during the arrest of an Isle of Wright County resident, Ronald Matthews, in December 2021 have reason to believe that that location was the clubhouse of the Wills of Soul. Outlaw motorcycle gang. Information developed during this investigation led law enforcement investigators to believe that Matthews, as well as members, have been involved in illegal activities. So they went over there to look. Peter said the uh, Wills of Soul biker gang met at the clubhouse weekly while it's unclear what went on inside. It's unclear what went on inside, but clear enough to go and drive through the front door to find out. I don't know. It just seems kind of crazy. So Potter said evidence, including documents and ledgers. Let me tell you what ledgers you find in a clubhouse. Because there are ledgers there. And the ledgers you find are who paid their dues, who was late on their dues. Uh, uh, There's certain minutes and stuff that we take in the clubhouse. I can guarantee you ain't nobody sitting there taking no ledger about, okay, we're getting ready to bump off such and such bank. Let's get this down in the ledger. I, I mean, I hope. I hope that's, I hope nobody's that silly. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, it's so boring, uh, a motorcycle clubhouse ledger. But they're important. We have some that go back uh, 40 years. You can see, like, when somebody joined the club and paid, we, it's our club history. The secretary's supposed to take that. So you'll see some ledgers and they'll look juicy, but that don't that, that don't mean all that's going on in them. Uh so uh they found some ledgers that's tied to possible, possible illegal activity, possible. Actually, you're gonna find that it's tied to how to run a clubhouse. That's what I would think. Uh and so they come out with this hook because we don't have no evidence, so we we gotta we gotta explain. Why we ain't got no evidence? We ain't got no evidence, so we got we to gotta say that. So they come out. They run these outlaw motorcycle gangs like businesses. No, we run clubhouses like businesses with ledgers and documents and, 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 and ceremonies. And uh, people have to be prospected. And, you know, we might pour ice on them or something. You know, we, 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 we write that down. We any organization you have, you're gonna run like a business. They 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 run these gangs like businesses. We run motorcycle clubs like businesses. Most of the time, the businesses they are involved in is a criminal activity. And uh so that's what they sell you guys. When asked if Matthews was the ringleader of the organization, Potter says it would be accurate to call him that. He was a high ranking member. Doesn't say he was the president. Oh. Excuse me. He was the vice president. Well, the vice president is not the leader of the motorcycle club. So he can't be called the ring leader. It would be accurate to call him that. No, it would be accurate to call him the VP. There's a president that the VP answers to just, just, just real stuff. I mean, it's just how it really goes. It's, it's the truth. Uh, Potter says gangs like these have a violent history. Motorcycle clubs do have violent histories. Uh, that's not a lie. We do, but that doesn't, you know, all this other stuff going on up here, according to the, uh, According to the FBI, the organized groups support themselves primarily through drug dealing, trafficking, and blah, blah, blah. We, 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 we saw all of this. Uh, we saw all that. 
But um, I guess um, the thing to know is that, you know, everything I've said uh, up until now, Potter said the biker group is meant to look inconspicuous. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, you know, he's got it like it's some sort of like they they dress down their building and they look inconspicuous. Do you really look inconspicuous when you're riding down the street in colors and everybody sees who you are? That's not inconspicuous. We, we like we ride in a parade everywhere we go. To a lot of people on the outside, they look like they're just a group of motorcycle enthusiasts who come together to ride. Well, we are motorcycle enthusiasts who wrap ourselves into an extended family um, caressed by the love of iron and the willingness to live the biker lifestyle according to the protocols, rules and traditions thereof anyway no arrests were made friday oh potter believes the wills of soul organization is the primary organization in hampton roads but it has other chapters in virginia and along the east coast and uh so that's what he believes and that's what he's going to be out to prove and he says that no arrest or, or they say no arrests were made friday no arrests were made they don't say no arrests were made because um, no evidence was found. They say no arrests were made. And they go on to continue the justification. No arrests were made, but Potter said the documents uncovered during the search will help to lead them to other criminal activity. And this is uh, this is what we see, friends. So, I just wanted to say that it's um, uh, interesting. It's kind of sad. Post officers were post office was involved in the raid. What has the MC done? Not enough stamps on their Xmas greeting cards. You know, normally the post office gets involved if you've done something uh, like, like, like maybe uh, a couple things. You could you could misrepresent something uh, on, like you could put out a Christmas flyer saying um, uh, we're going to be uh, delivering toys for tots um, and uh, taking up donations for Christmas. And, and you could do something wrong in that, like maybe not give any kids any toys or something like that. So then you've cr committed some kind of a mail fraud. Or you could have sent a weapon or something through the mail and committed a mail fraud. Brianna says, I live in Georgia in a town with a 1% or clubhouse. I've never seen them on the news. Low crime town. Actually lived here for years before realizing they were even there. And they have a sign. But they're meant to look inconspicuous. Snook the Crook said, BD, why are they always lying? Bro, I I wish, you know, like I had that answer and stuff for you. <laughs> uh, I wish like I'd be like, I know why they're always lying. This is why. And this is how we stop it. Um Let's see. I'm trying. So I'm bringing this to a close, of course. Um, and I'm just trying to get through the west rest of the comments. The armored vehicles are terrifying. The most terrifying thing is yet to come. Look at the truckers in Canada. Disbanded by force. Bank accounts seized. Coming here soon. Did they really seize people's bank accounts? Uh, I wasn't really watching that uh, as closely. Uh, I know they were disbanded by force. Um, I mean, how long did you think they're going to let them sit on the bridges? But, um, I know they were disbanded by force. I imagine. I don't know how much force. I mean, I, well, only two or three people got really arrested when they said they were coming to disband them. Most people finally left, but, um, 
I didn't know they froze people's bank accounts. That's a good way to disband. You ain't got no money to eat. Um, uh, somebody said members, dues, minutes, and financial reports. That's typically the documents you'll find in a clubhouse. Uh, I wonder how long it'll be till they get their records back. No, it's the secretary taking minutes from church and where they are going for the weekend to support events. I mean, people, somebody else says the bar tab ledger. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> people that are in motorcycle clubs know uh, what documents are in clubhouses. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm probably going to do a story about this um the 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 Canada truck thing uh because it doesn't look like it's over um for sure um and uh so many of you guys are commenting on it uh maybe we should should take a look at it so some of my smart folks helped me get up to speed on what's happening with the trucker thing because I said something about it the other day and people jumped all over me oh my god uh they don't raid the Freemasons gang and they apparently <laughs> run the world yeah, Daredevil. Uh, <laughs> Devil's my club brother up in uh, uh, up in uh, Frederick Chapter uh, of Maryland. Uh, they Dave, they sent hired masons to go beat the protesters out in Canada. Of course, they need them. We sock one of them and we get five years. They kill us and they get to walk away. They too get to walk away. Uh so um, we're going to look at that up there. Most violence is caused by outsiders who try. Okay, so you guys are kind of talking about the that truck stuff up there. Uh, so possible. Sus okay, yeah, I like this. Mad Dog Leatherneck Nation loves what we see in this article. And I, I forgot to point that out, and I'm glad that you did for me. Possible, suspected, et cetera used by law enforcement and news media to propel their story and influence or guide the public's opinion. They love those words, possible. They will lead to future investigations. Just to come out and saying, we didn't get D-I-C-K. We didn't get D-I-C-K. We didn't get nothing. Sorry for the trouble. Uh, somebody said in some cities, they asked for all these documents that you just called off, and if you don't have it, you would be in trouble. Well, motorcycle clubs are private organizations, so they're not like businesses in most cases, so they don't have to provide those documents. Um, but uh, anyway, let's see. I'm getting to the end of these comments. Yes, even people that were not involved got their accounts frozen. Can you just go in and freeze somebody's account without like a court order or something? Is that what Trudeau is doing up there um, in a free country? That's a Western civilization country. Seems kind of crazy. Um, anyway, we're at the end. Wow, we're at the end of the comments. Missing ledgers and other documents and take them down for tax evasion like, like uh, uh, Al Capone. Well, I'm sure they're going to do everything they possibly can. So I guess the thing that I, I, I want us to look out for, and, and, and you bikers are aware, and I guess the thing I want us to look out for is that um, it's tough out here, man. The You can't just be a fallen for the okie doke. There's more going on than that. These folks will have you believe anything. And um, it's not necessarily true. Listen, make sure to, uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter, uh, it's at JBunchII, stands for John Bunch II. We are on Facebook, Black Dragon Biker. If you want to donate to the channel, and we could use your donations, believe me, it's JBunchII at AL.com, which is my PayPal. It just it comes to me, JBunch II. John Bunch II, jbunchii at AOL.com. If you want to send to our cash app, it's dollar sign biker prez, P R E Z. If you want to send to our Patreon, it's Black Dragon National President on Patreon, because that was the original name of uh, the um, channel. 
If you uh, want to go to our online uh, news magazine, it's bikerliberty.com. And if you want to uh, buy our gear, uh, Prospects Bible, President's Bible, all of my books, autographed, and all that sort of thing, go to blackdragonsgear.com. Now, you can also get my books on on uh, um, on on Kindle, and you can also get my books on Amazon. But if you buy them from me directly, blackdragonsgear.com, I actually make a little bit more money, if you care. Uh, you might not care, but if you do, how do I get Black Dragon the most money? That's it. Um, and you can also get the books, you know, autographed and that sort of thing. Our online really cool uh, podcast is um, bikerliberty.com. And this is the podcast right now. As you can see, this is the, the thing that copies the podcast. The podcast is being simulcast right now on iTunes and all those places that you get podcasts. It's right here. Um, and that's what it looks like. So we are actually podcasting live right now. The Black Sabbath has an event coming up this Saturday, and we would like for you to all be there. And uh, this event is our first annual run. Whoa, somebody just sent me a cash app. Man, thank you, Swole. Man, that is, like, really cool. Uh, man, I didn't know it was that easy. <laughs> I do this all the time. Anyway, um, the... Um, the um, it, you guys got me all thrown off now. I'm so happy to get that 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 money, man. Like, oh, makes it just beautiful. I'm gonna cry. Um, but thank you so much for that kind donation, man. I really appreciate it. Um, I didn't even know it came across the phone like that. I, you know, I I send cash apps. Like, I'm the money person for my family. Like, everybody always depends on me. Uh, that woman that I have is always needing her nails done and stuff. I don't get the ching that other people get. And, you know, I'm really disappointed. Uh, but I just felt that for the first time, like, ching. and that was cool, man. Thank you, Swole. I appreciate that. Um, the, the, our first run is going to be our, our first annual Black History Month run is going to be at the Edmund Pettus Bridge. And we're doing that this Saturday. And we're going to be meeting there this Saturday at 12. And we're going to ride over to the Edmund Pettus Bridge. And it's going to be us and, and two other motorcycle clubs, the Iron Gems Motorcycle Club. And the and that's a female club. It's going to be the Iron Gems Motorcycle Club. And it's going to be the G, G Riders Motorcycle Club. And we're all going to be going there together uh, with only the Strong Motorcycle Club that's going to be hosting us in Selma. And we're going to meet up there and we're going to go to the bridge and we're going to um, celebrate at the bridge. So our meetup will actually be, let me see, I think it's 12 o'clock. Yes, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, where we'll have our registration and stuff. And we're going to be meeting at the Only the Strong Motorcycle Club. And their address is 21, 23, 14. 2314 Highway 80 East Selma. 2314 Highway 80 East Selma, Alabama 36701. We're going to meet there at 12 and we'll have registration. So if you want to register early, send your money in early, the registration is $10 per rider, $10 per passenger on your motorcycle, $10 per vehicle, up to two people. More than two people is an extra $5 per occupant. This money is going to all go to benefit Selma University. Now, if you want to donate to us, you can um, donate uh, by sending your money to dollar sign Black History Ride on Cash App. Now, if you don't have Cash App, you can send it to me, your donation to me. Uh, and, and put that you want it to go for the ride and I will make sure that the ride gets it. No, honestly, I will. Honestly. I mean, you can, you can trust me. Um, 
So if you want to, let me put that up here real quick. You can send the donation by PayPal to jbunchii at aol.com. Yes, I know. AOL.com. Yes, I still have my AOL email address, not Gmail like the rest of you suckers. It's AOL, jbunchii at aol.com. So send it to that um, PayPal if you want to use PayPal. If you're going to use Cash App, please send it to dollar sign Black History Ride. Now, that's the registration. And we'll be meeting at only the Strong Clubhouse at 12 p.m. Central Time, Central Standard Time. And we'll ride over to the bridge. They're going to shut the bridge down. We're going to hang out at the bridge, have a good time, then come back to only the Strong Clubhouse, only the Strong Motorcycle Club Clubhouse, and party, 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 party until early Sunday morning. And then we're going to get up Sunday and go home. Now, there are two hotels. The Holiday Inn Express at 2000 Lincoln Way and the St. James Hotel located at 1200 Water Street. Very close to each other. Hotel rooms are going fast. Uh, we'll meet at the clubhouse, ride in parade formation to the bridge for the tribute ceremony, and then go back to only the strong. So you can contact Brother 4D of the Mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation, Macon Chapter. His number is 478 714 8602. 478 714 8602. You can call G Riders, um, the G Riders Motorcycle Club. The brother's name is Certified, 478 978 7832. 478 978 7832. Or Queen Sugar from Iron Gems Motorcycle Club. If uh, you want to talk to them, 478 456 2478. 478 456 2478. Queen Sugar. Uh, and we are leaving from all, if you, if the Black Sabbath, we're leaving from all over the country, Frederick, Maryland, or all over the East anyway, in the Midwest, Frederick, Maryland, uh, Pensacola, Florida, Beaufort, South Carolina, uh, uh, North Shore, Louisiana, Atlanta, Georgia, Macon, Georgia, Frederick, um, Frederick, Maryland, oh my goodness, um, all over. Uh, Oklahoma, Wichita, Kansas, um, uh, Hutchinson, Kansas, uh, up there in uh, Topeka, Kansas. Yeah, them too. I don't know if the Colorado Springs guys are coming. They just rode out to uh, San Diego. And they might be too wussy to make a back-to-back -back ride. But we'll see. And then, of course, uh, Houston and uh, Dallas and Fort Worth chapters are all coming. So you can get rid, you can get with any one of those chapters to ride with us. Uh, there, if you want to just take a long ride, I'll be there. If you, if you bring one of my books with you, I will absolutely sign it for you. And I'll have some books there. If you want to pick up my books, I'll, I, I'll have some books there for you to buy. And, you know, you can take pictures with me uh, if you want. Not that I'm anybody or anything, but some people want to take pictures with me. So, absolutely, I'll be there for that. You know? So, um, that is what's going on. What's up, Kyle Sharp? Hi. What's up, Ant Squirrely? Good to see you. And uh, I think um, I've said it all. Now, I'm gonna, I've had a whole lot more comments in. Let me check them out again. PayPal link to donate to that motorcycle event. Just send it to me right there. Oh, excuse me. It's backwards. Right there. jbunchii at AOL.com. And just send in that link that it's a donation for the event. And if you do that, I will make sure that the brothers uh, get the money. Oh, wow. Another Cash App donation. Holy moly. Man. Thank you. Uh, I don't want to say your name on here. Okay. Abacus Beats. I don't want to say your real name. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much uh, for the donation, man. Uh, wow. This Cash App thing works. That's crazy. Um, anyway, somebody called me on the phone. Is this the father of the Mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation? Father, is that you? 
Oh, he must have hung up. Nope. Oh, me. what's up, man? Hey. We are blessed to have the founder, the father of the Mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation. Just had his 74th birthday. He's still with us. What's it like when you see all of this that you guys put together as kids? Man, let me tell you. This weekend when I got to see my people, man, it was, it, I, I guess you got to, if you're a grandparent, you know what I, I feel. Because I feel like all of them are my grandkids. And grandparents love their grandkids. Man. They love them better than they all love their own kids. And like I said, my mouth was just went wide open. And I'm just so happy for them, you know. Yeah. To see, feel, and touch. To see, feel, and touch them is, is, is like I said, it's got to be like being a grandparent. Okay? And if you're a grandparent, you know exactly how fresh is your grandkids are. Okay? Uh, we had the uh, 50th anniversary. Wasn't it the 50th anniversary? That's the 48. It's 50 for me. No, no, no. Uh... Uh, no, this is this. I think. Let me see something. I got to do some math real quick here. I I I was counting fifty from seventy two. From seventy two. Hold on a minute. Yeah. What are we at? Two thousand twenty two uh-huh. minus nineteen seventy four. Am I? Oh, it is forty eight. Yep. Why am I thinking it was fifty? Okay, because so we're, we started it because we started, started in seventy two. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We didn't get recognition to 74. We didn't get recognition until 74. Okay. So right. uh so we're 48, 50 years old. <laughs> I'm 50, y'all 48. Right. So uh um wow, that's that so what was it like when you, you got to see you you couldn't have known as a as a young man. How old were you when you start when you guys got together and put the Black Sabbath together? How old were you? I never asked you that. 42. 22 so uh you did you i mean di- what did you expect did you did you even uh, you know, know uh uh-huh. no i just had no kind of inkling all it was was seven guys who wanted to start something and, and, and on sunday we rode on sunday and we just started riding and and it just it just blew up you know i was the first one not the exact first one, but I was the first one to let everybody ride my bike to learn how to ride. Okay. And uh and next thing I know, man, my my, my brothers they just started buying bikes, man. <laughs> because I had one. It wasn't gonna let me be by myself, okay. <laughs> That's wild. So uh Yes it is it is wild, man. Well I wish that you would be on this uh uh, this this our first uh, annual um, Edmund Pettus Bridge, uh, or actually Black History Month ride. But we're going to be doing this every year from now on, starting That's a right. brand new tradition. And, That's right. Uh, I'll be there next year. Wherever if, we're going if next God's year. God's willing. Oh yes. Oh God will be willing. Uh, well, absolutely. I, 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 look, I want to be there with y'all. I want to be there with y'all this weekend so bad. Let me tell you. Because, you know, we did the very first Martin Luther King parade in San Diego. It was so bad. They couldn't even get nobody to participate in the, in the parade. So this little lady from the Urban League, she came and, and I was the president at the time. And she told me what the problem was. And she said, would you guys please help us? And I said, man, there ain't no way in hell we're not going to help you. And I mean... At first, the, the parade went right through the neighborhoods and stuff. And what, two years later, like, what's going to happen to you guys? It got so big, they took it downtown and $100 entry fee, a couple of hundred dollar entry fee just to get into it. But when we were there, it was absolutely free. They begged us to come and come in, but they didn't have nobody. Wow. I mean, absolutely no one, okay? Mm-hmm. Because you have to remember, when they first had that first parade, the Martin Luther King wasn't even cool at all. The system hated him. Him, okay. Mm-hmm. 
And and of course they hated us because we was bikers, but we didn't give a damn. So what? Nice. We go we go we gonna participate in this deal. I made all my people get to go home and get their shit. Okay. Yes, sir. That's all. So with that bridge deal going down, like I said, two years from now, they'll be having this big giant interest seat to participate in it. And, you know, with it being the first one, you know, it's, it's okay. But once they hit big, I'm looking forward to do just like the Martin Luther King. They'll take it to downtown, and then they'll probably, probably won't do the, 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 na- the neighborhood like they did at first. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They'll take it to right to downtown, Selma, or wherever the hell it is. And they might go across the bridge again, but <laughs> beware. Oh, well, no, they're going to take it someplace new every year. So I don't mm-hmm. know where it'll be next year. But anyway, sir, it was good to have you. Um, mm-hmm. Just hold on the line. We'll talk as soon as I'm done here. Love you to death. Uh, and uh, happy, way love, son. happy 48th anniversary, uh, 50th anniversary for you of the Mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so, folks, that's uh, the show for today. Beware of the news, man. They uh, they write anything about us. You got to be careful. All right. They will allow them. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's my two cents. Love to hear your two cents in the comment section below. I'm Black Dragon. I'd like to say thanks for tuning in and get skinny. And also, get the book. Prepare yourself to take the helm as president of your mighty motorcycle club by delving into the pages of Black Dragon's newest book, The President's Bible, Chronicle One, Principles of Motorcycle Club Leadership. There you will learn to advance your skills in applying the 14 scientific principles of leadership similar to those taught to officers in the United States Naval Service. Available in hardcover, paperback, and ebook. Get yours today on Amazon, Kindle, or order it at your local bookstore. Order your autographed copy from BlackDragonsGear.com. Be the best motorcycle club president you can be. Get the book! The book. Oh.